Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Ung Studio and today we're going to be making a twisted tower light out of frosted acrylic. This project is inspired by two things. The first is that I'm an architect and I love to look at buildings whenever I travel and I love to look at pictures of them on blogs every day. The second reason that I decided to make this project is because I put out a question on my Instagram recently where I asked my audience what building they would recommend that I look at to get inspiration for a table lamp. From that simple question, I got a lot of suggestions and one of them was a building designed by Palma and Partners. Palma and Partner designed the building that they call the Cayenne Tower out in Dubai. This building is essentially a square or a rectangular shape and what it does is it twists at almost a 90 degree by the time it reaches the top. That simple twist from the base to the top of the building gives it a really beautiful helical form. I'm going to be focusing on that design aspect of the Cayenne Towers for this project today. Before I jump into the 3D model of this project, please remember to support this channel by liking this video and subscribing for more. Now with that, let's jump into the 3D model of this project. Here's a 3D model of my design for the twisted tower light. You can see the resemblance between this light fixture and the Cayenne Towers designed by Palma and Partners. When I revolve around this 3D model, you'll start to see it twisting as it goes up. From the base down here, all the way to the top of the light, there's about 20 pieces. That means that all of the pieces in between are rotated at about a 4.5 degree angle to give us a perfect 90 degree twist by the time it reaches the very top plane here. So from the bottom to the top, it's a perfect 90 degree twist and that creates this really beautiful helical form that you can see in this 3D model as well as the Cayenne Tower that I was talking about earlier. To make this twisted tower light, there will be 21 horizontal planes which I'm highlighting here in yellow. These horizontal planes all have a 3 inch circle cut out of the center of it. My fear during the assembly process is that I won't be able to fit my hand inside of these circles to install the light bulb, but if I can't do that, I'll find other means to install the light bulb. The reason why I want to keep it as small as possible is because I want this to be narrow and I want it to be tall. If I want the proportions to stay somewhat like this, I'd have to grow the width but grow the height as well just so that I can maintain this beautiful aesthetic. So that's why the circle is 3 inches wide. Holding all of those horizontal pieces are two vertical posts. These vertical posts have finger joints cut out on all of them. Those finger joints are about a half of an inch apart. Those finger joints will attach directly to finger joints that are cut out of all of the horizontal planes which you can see here in yellow. When I highlight both of them together, you'll see both of those finger joints overlapping one another and that's where I'll be gluing the two pieces of acrylic together. The issue that I'll encounter during the assembly process of this project, which you'll see in that phase of this video, is that the vertical posts have to be installed one at a time. That means I have to perfectly align all of the horizontal pieces, glue them onto the finger joints of the vertical ones, and then get the second vertical piece on, align all of the finger joints, put some glue into each of them, and then slot them together and snap them into place. That's going to be really hard to do, because acrylic is brittle and when you're working with it at this scale, it tends to snap pretty easily. So I have to take my time working on it. The second thing that I'm really concerned about is actually the structural stability of the vertical posts here. It's only about 0.11 inches thick, which is the typical thickness of a 3 millimeter piece of acrylic. Having only two of those posts to hold all of these horizontal bands will probably make it wobble a little bit when it's fully assembled. Now let me show you what these pieces look like individually in Adobe Illustrator where I've assembled all of them on sheets for laser cutting. So here in Adobe Illustrator, you'll see that I was able to fit all of the pieces onto a total of three sheets. All of these sheets are sized perfectly to fit into my Glowforge laser cutter. Starting with the first sheet, you'll see an example of how all of the horizontal pieces were designed. The way that I achieved that twisting effect is that I changed the location of the finger joint by a slight angle and I made sure that I maintained that angle throughout so that it would be a continuous and beautiful curve along the corners of all of the pieces as they twist all the way up from the base to the top of the light fixture. Underneath all of them, you'll see the two different frames that I showed you in the 3D model. The last thing that I wanted to mention is that I wanted to decrease the amount of waste that comes out of my project just like I try and do in all of my other projects. So to do that, I included a mandala at the center cutout where all of these circular voids would be cut out for this particular light. 
Those circles will now become coasters and they have a mandala pattern that I quickly drew out in Rhinoceros. After I drew it out, I put my logo at the center so that I would have all of these coasters that I can give away to family and friends. So that's the design and the 3D model of the Twisted Tower Light that's inspired by the Cayenne Tower building designed by the architecture firm Palma & Partners. One thing I wanted to briefly talk about are the materials and tools that I'll be using for this project. If you haven't seen my previous acrylic light videos, I highly recommend you check those ones out first because I talk a little bit more about the tools and materials and how I use them to create lights like this one. In terms of the material, I'll be using this really beautiful frosted piece of acrylic that's frosted on one side and clear on the other. The frosted side of this acrylic here diffuses light really well, while the clear side here reflects light really well. I'll also be using this glue here just to attach all of the finger joints together. This glue is from Bob Smith Industries and it does a really good job at adhering the two pieces of acrylic together without having as much of the off-gassing that other products like Weld On has. Now before we jump into laser cutting and assembling this project, please remember to support this channel by liking this video and subscribing for more like it. With that, let's jump into laser cutting and assembling this project and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done.
So that's how I make this twisted tower light out of frosted acrylic. This was a really fun project to work on, and I'm so happy that the person on Instagram recommended that I check out the Cayenne Towers in Dubai. I never heard of the project before, but when I saw pictures of the building, the first thing that came to mind was mimicking the way that every floor plate was actually rotated at a slight angle until it got close to a 90 degree turn at the very top. For this particular light, I got to that 90 degree turn by the very top plate that you see up here. The one thing I would change about the design is I would actually add in two extra vertical posts because you can start to see how it's wobbling one way or the other. It's because it doesn't have the structural stability because the two very thin 1 8 inch pieces of acrylic is actually starting to, to bow based on the amount of weight from the horizontal pieces that are attached to this entire light fixture. So I would add two more posts or I would actually use a quarter inch piece of acrylic. The other thing I would change is the size of the openings of every plate that goes from the top to the bottom of this entire light fixture. The reason for that is you could see in the time lapse that I actually had to use a pair of tongs like this so that I can screw the light bulb on. I actually unplugged the light before I did it so I wouldn't shock myself, but my hands are too big to actually fit all the way through to screw the light bulb in place. Overall, it was a really fun project to work on and it took a little bit longer than I anticipated. From the beginning to the end of this project, it took about eight hours total, and that in includes the amount of time it took to design a project, 3D model it, and then to construct it the way that you're seeing it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to check out my new website and my Etsy shop in the description section below. Please remember to support this channel by liking this video and subscribing for more like it.